that's my Durban mutton curry, the South African Durban mutton curry. So I know we're going to enjoy this. So try this recipe and you'll be surprised. You may just like it. In fact, you may just love it. Good evening, everyone. We decided we're going to have lamb curry for supper or mutton curry. So I've cut up the meat into pieces and to accompany that, the ingredients, chopped tomatoes, curry leaf, onions, crushed ginger garlic, mint, thyme, and not forgetting the good old chili, which I'll slit into four as I cook. Then the masala, we use the Kashmiri medium mix masala. We prefer to use that. And the other spices are turmeric powder, crushed chili, garam masala, jeera powder, the biryani mix masala, and dhania powder. So I'm really going to enjoy cooking this one. And while the curry is cooking, I'm going to prepare some potato to go with the curry. We prefer potatoes in our curry. It adds to the flavor. I've got the oil on high heat at the moment. Now the oil of I've been thought to cover the bottom of the pot with just a slight dip to it. So that's the level of oil, that's the quantity of oil I have in this size pot. So I'm going to add the onion. Add in some curry leaves and just the tip of the stem. Because I believe that also gives some sort of flavor as well. Good stir. And now I add some of my spices. Starting with the turmeric. And the rest of the spices. Stir. Gonna reduce the heat now to slightly below medium heat. The 
going to add in my tomato. garlic some of the mint and the thyme let, us let that all fry in At this point in time, I'm going to fry the meat in those spices. Stir the meat into the spices, make it easy to be coated with those lovely aromatic spices. the salt. Now the salt is discretionary as to your taste. As the cooking goes along I will give it a taste to see that the salt is to our satisfaction and to our taste. I want to fuse the chili in to the meat as well. So the green chili, so I'm going to split that into four, as I mentioned earlier on. Stir, it, stir that in as well. I'm going to cover the pot for now so that it cooks with its own steam as well because remember I've lowered the heat to just below medium. I've been thought that there's different methods of cooking lamb curry or mutton curry or any curry for that matter um, 
as long as you keep to a certain sequence, if you want consistency in your taste, then you need to follow the fairly same process of cooking in almost every curry. For example, if you're cooking a mutton curry, if you're cooking a chicken curry, fish curry, then make sure the sequence of how you cook is consistent all the time if you want to maintain that taste. Obviously, the exception being if you want to try something new. At this point in time, I'm going to add the Kashmiri mixed masala. Good stir in and the Kashmiri mix masala gives the curry a good reddish color for those who love a red color curry. And for us in South Africa, we fairly spoiled in the sense that we love our curries to be red. Even if it's mild, we still love it to be red. And that's when it was open to abuse because we found a lot of people put coloring and so forth into the curry. But as you can see, there's a lovely red color to the curry. So I'm gonna let that simmer for a while with the Kashmiri mix masala. You would have noticed that I haven't added water to the curries yet. And this is basically just the juices from the meat that's creating the gravy here. But I will have to add some water shortly. Okay, so as I check the curry now, it does need a bit of water, so I will add a touch of water to it. Not too much, you don't want to weaken the gravy. So I'll add just a touch of water, not too much, to, min to, maintain, to maintain the consistency of that gravy to a certain thickness as it cooks. Um, so as it cooks now, it'll thicken again. And I don't want it too watery. Some people prefer that, but we don't. We also have a guest in the kitchen, and that's our annoying cat, Ginger who spends the entire day playing outside, making mischief. And just when we're busy with stuff, then he comes in meowing. So we obviously have to check the curry from time to time and ensure that the meat softens before you put the potato in and to also check that the gravy doesn't dry out and the meat sticks to the pot and you don't want that. So um, you have to, every few minutes, just keep an eye on the curry so that you get a lovely curry at the end of the whole process. Okay, another check of the curry. So a few things happen behind the scenes. I increased the heat and I added a little bit more water. And the reason why I increased the heat is just to hasten the cooking time. You really need to eat 
and you not know, to wait longer than you really need to. So, as you can see, the curry is taking shape nicely, a nice consistency of gravy, the thickness as per our preference, and sort of test the meat because I normally test it by just taking out one and putting it into a saucer and seeing if it pulls apart easily. Which I am going to try there. Yeah, and as you can see, it, it does. It does. If you sink your spoon into it, and especially with this cut of meat, generally a tougher cut of meat, so you want to be very sure before you put your potatoes in. Okay. Back into the curry it goes. Decrease the heat back to just below medium. Now this is one large potato which I've cut into pieces. Stir that into the curry. Get it nice and coated with all the gravy and the masalas. And fry it up. Yes. All day. Exactly as we want it. So these potatoes are what we call up to date. It's a uh, soft cooking, but a more higher grade of soft cooking. It gets soft very easily. So it's such a normal standard soft cooking. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. So as the potato melts, it's going to contribute to the gravy as well. So I don't want that gravy drying out because as the potato melts, um, it's going to absorb into the gravy. So how does that look so far? At this point in time, I'm going to add a little bit more mint on the leftover here from earlier on. There is a little bit more there, but I'm not going to overpower it with the mint taste. So, yeah. I've also got some curry leaves left over from earlier on, and that I'm going to add as garnishing to the curry. I do have coriander as well, but I don't want to put too much of herbs into the curry. How does that look? I'm going to leave it to simmer in its juices with the gravy, let the potato soak that gravy up and I'll check a little later to see if there's any more water that we need to add. But there's one thing I have been thought is that when you add in water, this makes it just about covers the potatoes. You don't want to drown it, but just about covers the potatoes. And for me, that's just about right. I don't want to drown the potatoes. Okay, so let's let it cook. So I'm giving the curry another check with the potatoes in it and to just, to just check that the Gravy is not drying out. 
Now, with this potato, and as Sarah just reminded me as well, um, it cooks very soft. So we have to be very cautious with these potatoes because before you know it, the potatoes may get mashed in your curry. So <clears throat> now, while I'm on the topic of cooking curries, and uh, I've been watching vlogs of, from, and especially of people of Indian diaspora living across the world. And that interests me because being in South Africa, we're always curious to know how Indians live across other parts of the world. And I've been watching vlogs on Guyana, Trinidad, Tobago, um, India, obviously in South Africa here itself. And one thing I've picked up is every time I see someone cooking a curry, they have their own version, their own style to it. And that's across the different countries. And obviously, in each region of those different countries, the people there have their own style and flavor to those curries in how they cook them. So, um, I've basically adopted our own style here in South Africa. And in saying that, in South Africa itself, we have different styles of curry. We have some curries that have, have the North Indian influence. We have curries that have the South Indian influence. We have curries that have blend of both. And taking all of that, we've also come up with our own version called the Durban curry. And most of us cook very much to the style of the Durban curry. And there again, within the style of the Durban curry, each person has their own style of cooking the Durban curry. And uh, some like it very hot. Some want the color, but they don't want the chili heat in the curry. So you'll find that those curries are a bit mild. And uh, in my instance, I'm cooking the Durban curry, which I've adapted my own style to. And as I said, when you watch this, remember and bear in mind that people have different styles and different versions of cooking curries. And also, the Durban curry has its own different styles and different versions to it. One more check and um, I'm going to sink my knife into the potato. I don't want to test it with a spoon just in case it breaks apart. Okay, the potato, the potato seems just about there and the knife is just about sinking into it but not quite enough so I'm going to give it a few minutes more and then I'm going to put, because I'm cooking on a hot plate I'll put the stove off and leave it on, on the stove's heat so um, it cooks with that heat Okay, just by glancing at the potato, it seems like it's done. So I'm going to sink my knife into it. Yep, and it's also breaking apart slightly. So while it's still firm, I'm going to put the stove off all together. But remember, I'm doing that because I'm cooking on a hot plate. So it'll cook, it'll use the balance of the heat from the hot plate to cook and this is more or less how we like our curry. The firmness of the meat, but still soft, not fully falling apart. And the potato still quite firm, but not hard. Just right, that's to our taste.
what I'm going to do while I'm there at, at that point in the cooking is put the balance of the curry leaves. This one took off the stem. And that's my Durban mutton curry, the South African Durban mutton curry. So I know we're going to enjoy this. So try this recipe and you'll be surprised. You may just like it. In fact, you may just love it. <laughs> 